Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I've got whizzing around in front of me is one of the Free Guild Steel Helms. Who doesn't have a Steel Helm on? Because I think the Steel Helms are a little bit funny looking, but that's a matter of personal preference. Uh, this was a lot of fun to paint, and what I'm going to show you today uses mostly contrast as base colours, uh, followed by one or two highlights afterwards. So it is very much a battle ready and then take it a little bit further kind of paint job. Now the recipe for the base will also be in the description. And uh, I've been looking forward to painting this since I picked up the box. They are such neat miniatures. So let's get started nice and quick. So first things first, of course, once you've assembled your miniature, it's time to prime it. Now I've done things like I have done for my Space Marines previously, by priming it first of all in black, uh, really just concentrating on the underside. So I primed it by flipping it upside down and spraying from this direction. Then you shake up your wraith bone really well, and from roughly a 45 degree angle from above, uh, you start thin coats. Obviously with a primer, the temptation is going to be to just blast it, uh, but treat it like a light paint, like you would if you were painting white. A couple of thin passes to build up the color and make sure that it's nice and solid so you don't obscure any detail. Then we've still got some funky darkness underneath, um, and I think that's going to be really cool. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, I am really just throwing things at the wall to see what sticks here. This is more of an experiment than a how I paint things, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, I've really just wanted to get some paint on these miniatures for ages, so I'm going to play around and see what we end up with. Hopefully, it's something that looks halfway decent. Now over this primer, we're actually going to use contrast to lay down the base coats for most of this miniature, if I'm perfectly honest. I think we're going to do almost everything with contrast. Should, should look quite cool once we're done. I'm going to start, of course, from the lowest layer, and same as most miniatures, that's going to be the face. Here I'm going to apply Gilliman Flesh, as carefully as I get near the edges, drag my brush up towards it, and then lead away. Now one of the neat bits I find about these kits is that if we look right up at the trousers here, which is going to be one of our next steps, you'll see there's a couple of areas that are bracketed by metallic stuff. Now because we're going to use a metallic paint later, an actual acrylic, we don't need to be too careful about whether or not we hit those. So I've got my black Templar, and what I'm going to do is get in this little area of the trousers and just blob over the top of the knee pad not worrying if I hit that. Now I'm also going to use this to block in the trousers, sorry the boots rather, I'm doing the trousers now. <laughs> but yeah, the only thing you really want to avoid here is the clothing itself and the gaiters that they're wearing. Now when it comes to the clothing, they aren't actually all that uniform. There's kind of a mix of reds, oranges, and yellows in there. So this big Essentially, the, the overcoat, surcoat, I think it is, somebody will know, but the largest part of clothing tends to be red on these guys, and that's what I'm going to stick to. But whatever color you choose, start from the lowest level. So we are going to start with a surcoat, because that's also going to take us up right under the armpit here. Um, not every miniature has this visible section of sleeve under there, and I'm also going to paint the collar in with this same color. Uh, so whether it's orange or yellow or whatever, don't, don't get too hung up on what I'm using precisely here. I have Blood Angels Red, because it's wonderful. Now let's spin them around. This is a little easier to start with here. Just start applying this over the coat. And when you come near the edge, slow down. And just drag your brush away from it. I need more paint on my brush. Now those overlaid bits of cloth here, I'm going to use Iandan Yellow, but you might also try Agaros Dunes or uh, Griffhound Orange, whatever you fancy. Same trick applies, I'm going to start close to the edge, draw my brush away wherever possible. Um, in some areas you're going to need to get a little bit more fiddly, um, but again, bits that are going to be metallic later, just go straight over the top of them, oops, if you're worried about that. All right, now I'm going to paint the dark leather colors in Garagax Sewer. And again, I am extremely thankful for the fact that uh, I'm going to do a nice 
silver over the top of some of this. So it just lets me splodge this on in some areas. Um, weapon straps and equipment and stuff like that is going to be the, the most common spot you'll need to look out for. Now to reach the straps on the back of her shield here, I actually found it easier to flip her upside down and approach it from this angle. And I found that I didn't have to worry about hitting the front of the chest there. It was quite handy. Now the next color we're going to use for the lighter leather is going to be, this is snakebite leather. Um, although rattling grime or gore grunter fur, remember you're not dealing with uniformed troops. Well, I mean, they are uniformed, but uh, equipment, you know, <laughs> can look however you fancy. So a quick blast of this on the other leather stuff. Now finally we're going to give the shield some real love. What I've got here is Baal Red, because this is a lot lighter than Blood Angel's Red, and uh, the surface, the wooden painted surface, looks a little lighter in most of the images I've seen. Uh, there's nothing saying you couldn't do this with Blood Angel's Red. Um, I just wanted to see if I could get a bit more variation in color just by swapping these two contrasts. So away we go. Um, if you are worried about the back of the shield, you know, you can tidy up with a little bit of wraith bone before applying this, but I'd suggest you're probably not going to need to. Remember that particularly where you're painting for an army, uh, don't worry about the backs of shields and stuff like that. The effect that the unit is going to have on the table is going to be far more important than whether or not you got the straps painted correctly. Now with Skeleton Horde, we're going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to try a sweeping motion from the top of this boss on the shield here towards its base. You might also prefer doing this with Agaros Dunes. Uh, thinning it down a little bit though because uh, that will be quite strong and brown. And with a bit of care I'm going to use this to paint in the trim on the, uh, the fancy bits. Now for little scraps of paper uh, you can thin down Skeleton Horde. Normally I would go one on one with uh, Contrast Medium, but I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm turning to Bony Matter from the Army Painter. And uh, people ask sometimes about using alternatives for specific colors and, oh, can I use XYZ? The short answer is yeah, but your alternative is never going to look exactly the same. And putting Bony Matter right next to Skeleton Horde, I think you're going to see a little of what I mean by that. Um, I do quite like Bony Matter though, it's a wonderful paper colour. And bone colour. <laughs> now the last of the contrast base coats that I'm going to apply is here Saigor Brown onto her hair. Uh, now obviously there isn't a correct answer here, you can use whatever you'd fancy. And if you are assembling them with the helmets on, it's going to be kind of a moot point, but might as well make note of it while I'm working. And now we come to that fabled tidy up stage I was mentioning. What I'm going to start with is Iron Warriors. And this is a real dark, sort of off black metallic color. It's really nice. And it is going to work perfectly for the shield. And uh, I'm also going to paint the, the darker sort of Sigmarite sigils on his chest here with this. Um, I'm not going to do his chain, like his chain and his plate and all that. I am going to do in the same color. Uh, but for a little bit of visual contrast, I am going to do a nice dark metal on the shield. And that is going to look brilliant. Now every time I see it, I'm still a little surprised at how dark Iron Warriors actually turns out to be once it dries. We're going to do pretty much everything else from this point in Iron Hand Steel though. So here's shoulder pads, or her shoulder pads rather, the sword, the mail, all of it. And if you've got a steady hand and you don't mind the extra work, what you can do is to dot in the uh, buttons and buckles and what have you at the same step. And I am going to do that because I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, but particularly on things like the gaiters, don't worry if you don't because, you know, it's not going to add a huge amount. It will just look cool if it is done. So up to you there. And then finally, I'm going to use Retributor Armor on any gold details. So on this particular miniature, I'm going to paint in this little bit on the pommel in gold. Uh, but if you're painting the standard bearer, for example, that might look pretty cool. It's a big gold anvil looking thing. 
Now, once that's had plenty of time to dry, we're going to move on to shading the miniature. Uh, contrast is you know, a pretty good base coat, but I do like a slightly grimier finish, especially to my Warhammer stuff. So what I've got here, this is a half and half mix of Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium. Using straight Agrax Earthshade is going to be way too dark, uh, but mixing it down is going to do two things. First of all, make it a little more subtle, and it's going to let the contrast do most of its own work. And secondly, it won't be quite as kludgy to work with as it tends to be straight from the pot. Uh, so I'm going to go over almost the entire miniature. The only thing I'm going to try and avoid is the skin and hair, because they're pretty much how I want them to be already. Otherwise, I'm just going to give a quick coat of this to everything else. And we'll let this dry for about half an hour, and come back and see what we've got then. Now once that sheet has dried, what a difference it makes. Puts the dark in grim dark. I quite like what it does with the red and the yellow in particular, bringing it down without really losing the color, and adding a bit more just crunch and grime into the recesses. I really like that. I think thinning the shade is the right choice. Speaking of, I've done the same thing here. I have a mix of half and half Reichland Flesh Shade and Lamian Medium, because that Gilliman Flesh, cool as it is to do really quickly, uh, it's a little bit more pale than I tend to like. So I've thinned down that uh, Reichland Flesh Shade just to add a bit more warmth. It won't look like much going on, so uh, mind that you don't go completely mad with it. But after a few seconds, as it settles, you'll see particularly along cheekbones and what have you, that that'll add a bit of warmth. And don't forget the hands like I always do. <laughs> and while that dries, and I think you can see already that that's adding a bit of warmth there, what I have is Wraithbone, and I have thinned this down a little bit, it's always worth having the base color of the primer that you use for contrast. Now, what I'm going to do with this is to highlight around the edges of the tabard. And I know I've put Skeleton Horde over this, but that's really just as a, a shade of sorts, so that when I do this, the interior edge is a little bit more well-defined. Now, if you want to highlight the face any, go all the way up to Flayed One Flesh, and just a couple of little bits like along her nose, cheekbones, and brow to help accentuate some of the detail in the face here. Now for the red clothing, what I've got is Fire Dragon Bright. Um, I'm not going to bother highlighting the shield, to be perfectly honest. There are a few bits that we're just going to skip. Uh, but Fire Dragon Bright, this is going to look real fierce going on. Uh, but as it dries, it does dull down quite a bit. All the same, Thin it down with a little bit of water. As you see, I've just got a tiny wee amount on the end of my brush. Um, overloading your brush is the easiest, fastest way to lose control of what you're doing. Just little bits at a time. And you can come back and add to them if there's not enough, rather than splurging everywhere and having to fix a mistake. I'm gonna flick around so we can see that a little bit more clearly. And then in the same vein, I'm going to get a tiny wee bit of Ushapti Bone on my brush. Same principle, little, little amounts at a time. And uh, it's also a good idea, if you're not sure how much you're going to leave behind, just flick on your thumbnail. And it'll give you a good idea of how paint's going to flow off the brush as you start to apply it. Once you're satisfied with it, just a few little creases on her tabard here. Now, to be perfectly honest, we are now getting into the realm of me mucking around because I'm having fun painting. So feel free to skip some of these steps. I have liberated gold, and I'm going to do just a little bit on the pommel of the sword here. And now all of the metallic details I'm going to highlight in the same way. And that is going to be with a tiny wee bit of steel from Vallejo. It's a model air color. Uh, but funnily enough, it comes off a brush just fine. If you can't get your hands on this, then Stormhost Silver is a very close alternative. But basically, the more of this that you put on, the more dinged up and knocked around your miniature is going to look. So be a little sparing with it, but it will look cool to really accentuate the edges of the shield, the armor, and the sword. Now, one of the tricks with this is 
instead of painting a single straight line for a highlight, like let's take this section here, what I'll do is wiggle the side of my brush a little just to get some of the paint on, leave a gap, and dot dot dot, so we get this nicked shiny edge uh, with a little bit of character to it. Looks really cool. Yeah, dude, we're looking cool. Now the last thing I'm going to do on this miniature, uh, I'm going to dry brush your hair with a little bit of gold fag brown. Um, obviously, if you are painting the steel helms, or the steel pots or pot helms or whatever on it, I kind of remember their names. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about painting hair, but a quick blast of this will really help sell that. Afterwards, what I'm going to do is apply a decal to the little boss on her shield. Uh, now, because it's such a nice flat and simple area, I'm not going to do it on screen because you shouldn't have any trouble doing it yourself. Uh, but there is a video where I have gone over how to get the most out of transfers, so I will link that in the description. I'll then apply a varnish over everything, and we'll get a look at what she looks like when she is all finished. And so there at last, our Free Guild Steel Helm. Look at that, I remembered the name in the end. <laughs> uh, she is complete, and I had a really great time painting her. Now straight up top, full admission, I did paint a tiny wee strip of white, followed by some Black Templar into her eyes. Um, I will link to the video where I've done that before in the description. Um, the eyes painting video, it'll see you right for all sorts of things, and in particular here, it was really just white and a little bit of Black Templar, like I said, nice and simple. The varnish, I think, brings everything together just wonderfully. I know some folks don't like uh, a matte varnish over their armor, so with this miniature, what you could do would be to matte varnish her as I have here, and then take something like Stormhost and go over the armor again to put a little bit of a satin shine on it. Um, I like it how it is. I think it makes the highlights stand out just a little bit more, but it's a matter of personal preference, as everything else has been today. So if you are still sticking around, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, this is the last video of the year, so it's an opportunity for me to say good luck. <laughs> I always feel like we're going to need it coming into the new year. The last few have certainly been a ride. Uh, but if you have been watching, commenting, liking, sharing these things with folks, I really appreciate it. So I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you, including, as always, Exit 23 Games, who have made this possible with the light and sound equipment that I use to record, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who chip in and make sure that I am able to purchase cool toys like this including my gorgeous producers, a few of whom I've actually seen, and they are quite handsome, if I must say so myself. They're not paying me to say that, but on the off chance, you never know who's listening. <laughs> Their names should be on screen as I am trying to butter them up. Who knows? Uh, you folks are the ones that make this possible, and I mean this to everybody who's watching as well. Uh, I really appreciate that folks spend the time watching these videos. Um, I started about six years ago now, and the goal was always just to show folks how to paint your miniatures nice and quickly to a reasonable standard. Um, sometimes that's a little bit more involved, as I have done here today, just because I was having such a good time. So if you do have any questions, feel free, drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So one and all, all the best for the New Year's, and uh, I will see you next time. You enjoy the rest of your day.